Kathy, you said something beautiful about how when writers get feedback from you, they feel safe with the notes that you give them. How can someone deliver a message and maybe critique something, but do it in a safe way so that the people can take it and change with it instead of being wounded by it? Well, I think first of all, you have to try and understand and find out from the writer what was your intent. Once you figure out what their intent was, you try to work with that because you, you want their vision to shine through, their perspective of the situation that they have put into their script, their um, perspective of what the main character is, who, who he is or who she is and what they're about. You want to make sure you don't lose that. And so that's why when I give my notes, I do try to address that and keep those things in mind. And I always tell them, you know, anything that I say is not set in stone. It really is up to you because you're the one who created the, the project to make your decision on what you think is best. I'm here to kind of give you guys an idea of some of the things that could possibly make it better or make it stronger or make the character um, more sympathetic. So usually if I uh, phrase things in that way and if I look at it that way, they understand and I'm not really like attacking them and I'm not really uh, so much as making a judgment call. It's really trying to um, give them another way of looking at a, a, a problem and how, to, how they might be able to solve it. What's the first step in writing a screenplay? Oh, wow. Having the idea and knowing how to develop it. Uh, sometimes people will come to me and they, I've got a great idea. And I said, well, write it down. Oh, no, I just want to tell it. To, I just want to pitch it to somebody and have them write it into a movie and get paid for the idea. And I said, hate to tell you, but they don't pay money for ideas. But once you have something written down, like a synopsis of, of, of your story, where you, have it, where you have most of the major details lined out, all you have to do is register it with the Writers Guild, if, you, if it's a, a screenplay. If it's a novel, um, I think you, know, you, need to, you may want to register it with copyright people or, or somebody like that, you know, just so that you have a, a record of, of having um, uh, written it. Uh, but you know, you have to write it down. You can't just expect somebody, if you just tell them the story, you can't expect them to just say, OK, yes, here's, here's some money, and I'd like to buy it. What do you think stops people from writing it down? I've heard that too. Oh, I have so many ideas. They're up here. They're here. <laughs> you know what? When you write something down on paper, well, first of all, or what it is nowadays is when you type it into your computer, it's there. It's, and it's hard. It's, it's, um, and then it's sometimes painful to read it because you're not quite sure. You know, you have it down in your head, but is it going to translate well when you read it? And it's, it's almost two different things because you have seen things visually and you're trying to put all of it in there. So what's tough for writers, I think, is sometimes when writers do a whole script or a whole novel or a whole manuscript, it's hard for them to try and focus when they have to edit it. That's the hard, uh, hard process. Sometimes they can get everything all written down, but then they don't understand that you can't write everything down and expect everybody to accept all of it. You have to pare it down so that the story is much clearer, uh, it's more easy to understand, and uh, also that do you have sympathetic characters, do you have dialogue that rings um, true, uh, is there a message or a theme that shines through? And so all of those things kind of come into play. If you were going to arm a screenwriter with one tool or weapon as it relates to writing, what would it be? Hmm. That's a tough one. I think there's, I've, I've seen so many people who write screenplays. The one thing that I think most writers are scared, most scared of besides the writing process, even more maybe than the writing process, is the pitching process. <laughs> so um, I, would, I would arm them with, um, with the courage to be able to get out there and to sell themselves as well as to sell their, their project. To believe enough in your project that you can go out there and can pitch it to the world and let them know, hey, this is my story, uh, this is who I am, and I would love the opportunity to have you take a, a chance and read it. So the big day comes and they're there to pitch. <laughs> what do they need to know? What preparation oh, beforehand? Wow. Well, a lot of my clients, uh, what I have them do is to have uh, certain tools 
One of them, is, of course, is a log line, which I'm sure you guys have probably talked about before. Uh, the other is to have a, a one-page pitch on paper, which has a, a summary, and it should be divided up into, hopefully, three paragraphs, which mirror Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. And those people, uh, most people will use that as a leave behind in case someone is interested, but they wanna, they don't want to commit yet to looking at the script. So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll, uh, if they think someone's interested, they'll give them the pitch on paper. But when you're actually pitching, one thing that my clients use is something called a pitch outline. A pitch outline is uh, very close to what you wanna, want to say, but it's not all written down. It's done in little phrases so that you're not tempted to read it. Because when people start reading their synopses, they lose their passion, they lose the excitement, the, um, the rhythm of the story, because they're busy staring down at their laps trying to read the project. And so their commitment to the project doesn't always show through. So with a pitch outline, uh, they have the opportunity to be able to sort of, if when they need to, when they lose their way, or if they want to make sure that they're on track, they can glance down. If they see a phrase, they know that, that what they have to do next is talk about that particular area. So uh, a pitch outline can be used if you, if you think about a trailer of coming attractions, all you have to do is like look at a trailer of coming attractions that's in the same genre as your project. And you'll notice that it's three minutes long, most of them in that in area. And they usually focus on like five to seven or eight key highlights of the story. And that should jolt your memory about, hmm, maybe I, okay, what can I think of in my storyline that's similar to that? And those are the things that you should be pitching. And it basically should tell us who the main characters are, what is the, the hero or heroine's um, challenge, who or what stands in his way, uh, what, the, um, what his or her mission or journey is, and in a way, if you can, what the theme is. What is it that, that they learn at the end? Now, in the pitch, you don't have to say anything about, you don't say, and the theme is. You can just sort of allude to it. But you do need to have um, just a general, uh, an outline. And, it, it, and it's not more than maybe a half a page, three quarters of a page long. But if you like to, I can, uh, what I can do is I can, uh, uh, for anyone who's interested, what I can do is I can send you, um, an email you a, a copy of a pitch outline for Avatar and you can share it with your listeners. So if you're interested, let me know. Self-awareness for writers. You know, we always hear that great writers, we talked to uh, Lee Jessup and she said that self-awareness is so important because they need to know where they're lacking and where they're strong. But how do we know who to ask and where do we become more self-aware as a writer? I think one of the ways you can become more self-aware as a writer is to belong to a writer's group. Because I think the support that you get from people who are going through some of the same uh, challenges that you're going through is inspiring to, to one, you, you become a, a sounding board for one another. And they did a, a study at Harvard or Yale or one of those uh, Ivy League colleges and they said the people, the writers who were in a writer's group seem to achieve success a lot faster being in a writer's group than when people, writers would do it alone. So I do think that that's a good way of, of becoming, um, having, achieving more of a self-awareness and to be more confident about who you are and what your work is about. Uh, another thing you might want to try doing is, is actually consulting with people like, like Lee Jessup or uh, if there's anyone else that you, that in particular that you've, uh, come, Carol Kirshner's another good, really good one. Uh, these two people, in, in general, really focus on uh, helping you to get your career started. And I think that once you take those first few steps with them, things become so much easier. So, you know, I, um, I do similar things, but most of mine uh, really focuses on the business, more of the business end of screenwriting, the pitching, the networking, and, and, and that type of stuff. So. You know, uh, I do think that there are people out there that can help you with it. Lee is one person, and, and Carol Kirshner is amazing, too. Networking for shy screenwriters. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's, um, it's not easy for a writer to break out of their shell, but I think that you can easily do it once you start thinking about what the end result might be. 
And when you realize that um, there are other people who are doing the same thing that you're doing, uh, it becomes easier. And being in a writer's group is one way. Another is to do volunteer or to be an intern. Uh, there are several, it's just like, you know, I'm at screenwriter, um, I've, I've done screenwriters, um, World, I've done uh, Story Expo, Great American Pictures, and these are all wonderful opportunities to do volunteer work. And you get to meet other speakers, other writers, you get to talk with some of the uh, people who are listening to the pitches who belong to production companies and agencies. It's a wonderful way to network, to build your community of colleagues. And that's another way, really, of, of, of helping yourself to become more aware of who you are and your work. And that, at the same time, you're learning something in the process because a lot of the volunteers I noticed were sitting in on some of the sessions and listening to what we had to say and it was good to see them there and know that they were really you know they were busily writing down information and they were what was great is when I would see them sharing it with other um, volunteers too 